Hello and welcome back to Awakening to Your Story TV, the place to learn, get inspired, and be supported on the journey of life. I'm your host, author, emotional heart expert, and heart enthusiast, Alicia Hartzell. I think it's safe to say that we've all dealt with toxic people in our life. So if today's question resonates with you, you are not alone. Dear Alicia, how do I deal with toxic relationships in my life? It seems like I go through cycles where I manage to get the toxic people out of my life, but then they come back and another one may show up. I am so tired of them draining my energy and wasting my time. How do I get them out of my life once and for all? I can totally appreciate wanting to detox and clean up your relationships. I actually hear more and more people saying that they just don't have time for their negativity in their life. But then, like a magnet, it seems to find them again, and they find themselves right back in the very same place. So today, we're going to talk about how and why these people keep showing up in your life. And then, we're going to make a plan to put them to work for you. I mean, seriously, doesn't that sound so much better? (laughs) Okay. Now, I know that it is much easier to focus on how wrong they are, but putting your focus there isn't going to get you anywhere sustainable. You can't change them. And even if you run in the other direction, they keep finding you. So to find the how and why they are in your life, you have to pivot your focus inward. I know. I know. You are nothing like them. I get it. I have heard it all before. I really, really have. This doesn't have anything to do with me. I'm nothing like that. I would never treat people the way they are treating people. And the outrage goes on and on. Now, let's put that outrage and that blame and that pain aside for a few minutes and just get curious. Because when you understand how the heart works, you can see how and why these people keep sneaking into your life. Now I explain all of this in more detail in the starter kit and also in the master class. But I'm going to give you enough information today to help you make the lasting change that you are looking for. So let's go back to the two factors that are simultaneously working within your heart at any given moment in time. First, you have your essential truth. Now, there's lots of ways that you can describe this truth. But I personally see this truth as fundamental to you, that it was woven into your humanity by your divinity. These truths align with your divine nature and cannot be separated out of your humanity. Now you also have limiting beliefs, and they are equally as many ways to describe these things. They are beliefs that contradict your truth. Other people have handed them down to you. And if they came in frequently enough or with enough emphasis, you began to adopt them as your own. Now, these beliefs bind your capacity of heart and hide your truth. The thing about limiting beliefs are they are always plugged into some form of fear and they easily become second nature to you as you own them and believe them to be your truth. Now, your divinity will always work to pull your truth to the forefront. But returning to your truth means you have to show up and do your heart's work. This will allow you to give up ownership of those limiting beliefs. Now, law of attraction is always working in your favor. It's why everything that is in your life is a mirror to you or a reflection to what is going on within your heart space and your story. But here's the thing. Law of attraction brings everything in, right? It reflects your essential truth and it reflects your limiting beliefs. Often we just think of law of attraction as working for us when we're trying to manifest things that we really want in our lives. But it is always working for us. And it does it with like law of gravity. It's always working in the background. So when law of attraction works to show us our essential truth, We experience magic and wonder and bliss and enjoyment of all kinds. When law of attraction is working to show us our limiting beliefs, it doesn't feel so good. 
But here's the thing. If it's in your life, then it's there for a reason. And it's all reflecting something within your own heart space. When you're dealing with toxic relationships of any kind, law of attraction has drawn that experience in or that person into your life as a reflection to your own heart. This is why even if you cut and run, a different toxic person can sneak their way right back in. Now you can't change them no matter how wrong you think they might be, but you can use them to illustrate what is going on within your own heart, and then you can change that. Once you do that, law of attraction won't be able to attract any of that in any longer. So how do you make a toxic person work for you? you allow them to be the reflection of your heart's work so that you know where to show up and do your work. Everything that is annoying to you about this person, right? It's a perfect illustration for the very limiting belief that you need to work on healing. Once you start to work on that, you will make room for your essential truth to rise right back to its rightful place. Now, a great place to actively do this work is in the starter kit. I give you exercise to pull the other people out of the equation and help you focus on giving language to everything that is going on within your heart. But for now, I just want you to grab a scratch piece of paper and write out all the things that keep circling in your mind about this toxic person. Remember, it isn't actually about them. It's about the language that your heart is holding and needs to heal. Once you have it all boiled down to a statement that feels the strongest, you can work it down to a limiting belief and then go back to the origin story where you adopted it and create healing. So let's just say that that process is the loudest, um, maybe around them acting like a victim. We'll just give it as an example, okay? So you pull out all of the feelings about being a victim and you take it back through your story. You gotta think about it. When was the first time you felt like a victim, right? Get curious. Use that that feeling like a puzzle piece. You may have to turn it around or flip it upside down. Just stay curious. It will, fill, it will fit into place eventually. Maybe it's not you claiming the victim status. Maybe it's you being responsible for someone who was. Whether you noticed it or not, that responsibility may be holding you in a similar place of frustration that you're in today. Now, stay curiously engaged and see where the information takes you within your own heart and your own story. To create a lasting change that you're looking for, you're gonna need to let go of those limiting beliefs and repattern your line of thinking back to your truth. There are endless ways of doing this, and I highly recommend grabbing the starter kit because it walks you through my favorite ways that I know will work for you. But if that's not an option right now, it's okay. The secret is finding the correlating truth and the limiting belief. I know you can find it. Just remember, it isn't about the other person in front of you. It is about finding a deeper freedom within your own heart. It's time for you to find and own your truth on the other side of those toxic limiting beliefs. You can do it. And until next time, know that I am holding a space of love for you where your path back to your truth, it's undeniable. For more support, information, and inspiration, join me at awakeningtoyourstory.com.